All right, in this video, I'm going to do an example of solving a pretty basic problem just using the Pythagorean theorem. So again, the Pythagorean theorem says if you have a right triangle, if you take the legs, that is the two shorter sides, if we call those A and B and the hypotenuse C, it says that these, uh, the, these sides will always satisfy the equation A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Certainly one of the most uh, used little theorems in all of mathematics. Um, it's great stuff. Okay, so in this problem, suppose we have an equilateral, equilateral triangle and it has a height of 8, 8 whatever, um, and suppose we just want to find the length of each side. So again, an equilateral triangle is just one where every side is equal. So I've labeled those generically as x. Well, the way to find, to find that length, if you the height is going to actually make a little right triangle. So what I'm going to do is look at that right triangle Okay, so we labeled this as x. We said that the height is 8. I could label, um, well I should, since the whole length is x, half of it would be x over 2 or simply 1 half x. So using the Pythagorean theorem, it says that 8 squared plus 1 half x squared, that's going to have to equal the other side, which is just x squared. So 8 times 8 is 64, 1 half x times 1 half x will give us 1 fourth x squared. We still have our x squared on the right side. Okay, so this is a quadratic where there's no, uh, there's no x's, there's no terms involving just x. So what I'm going to do on this one is, I think I'm going to subtract the 1 fourth x squared from both sides. So we've still got our 64 on the left. If you take a whole, 1 minus a fourth or a quarter, you'd have 3 fourths x squared. And what I'm going to do now is to get the, the x squared by itself is I'm simply going to multiply both sides by 4 thirds. So if we multiply both sides by 4 thirds, we'll get 64 times 4 thirds equals, okay, we've got 3 fourths x squared, but again, we're multiplying that also by 4 thirds. And again, the point of doing that, 3 fourths times 4 thirds is just going to give us 1 x squared. Uh, to simplify this, you could do 4 times 64 and then try to divide it by 3. I think we can do 64 divided by 3 um, right off the bat, unless I'm crazy here. Um, I think I am crazy. Of course, we cannot, we cannot divide 64 by 3. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we could still just simply multiply things out. 4 times 60 is going to be 240 times another 4. It looks like we get uh, 256 divided by 3. And then simply to solve for x, we'll take the square root of both sides. Again, normally we get positive and negatives when we uh, do square roots. But since x has to be a length here, it's definitely going to have to be something positive. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simplify this down a little bit. So we have the square root of uh, 356 over the square root of 3 equals x. Again, we know what two numbers multiply together to give us uh, the square root of 256. We just multiplied them. So that was 4 times 64 over the square root of 3. But, well, we can take the square root of 4, that would simply come out as a 2. The square root of 64 would come out simply as an 8. So it turns out maybe you recognize the square root of 256 immediately. It's going to be 2 times 8, or 16, again over the square root of 3. But typically people like to rationalize the denominator, so you get the, the radical out of the denominator. The way that we'll do that is we'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. There's really not much arithmetic you can do on the top. We'll get root 3 times 16, which I'm simply going to write as 16 square root of 3. And then on the bottom, square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, or again, just simply 3. And we now have our value. It says each side of the equilateral triangle would have had length 16 square root of 3 divided by 3.